In this video, you're going to learn about categorical features, what they are, when to use them, and how to create them. We'll continue to add code to the notebook we used in the two previous videos, so make sure you watch those videos and run the code in the notebook before moving on. You can find the notebook in the GitHub project associated with this video series by opening the regression folder and then the linear folder. Remember that in our previous videos, we filtered our pumpkin data to just the pie type pumpkins and used linear and polynomial regression to predict the price of a bushel of pumpkins given the day of the year. But we didn't get good results. Let's think about what we can do to improve those results. Maybe we can add more features to our input X. We've been making predictions only based on the day of the year, but we have a lot more features available to us in the original data. It's plausible that if we add more information to our input X, we'll get better predictions in Y. Let's start by adding the feature that encodes the pumpkin variety, which is an important feature if we want to bring back the data for all pumpkin types. The original data set contains four pumpkin varieties, fairy tale, miniature, mixed heirloom varieties, and pie type, and these are encoded as strings. But regression expects the input data to be numerical, so we can't really use the data as is. One option to get around this issue is to assign a numerical value to each of the pumpkin types, say 1, 2, 3, and 4, and replace the strings with those numbers in our input. But this is not the best option for linear regression because we chose the order arbitrarily and it's unlikely that the relationship between those numbers and the price is linear. We need a way to differentiate between the different pumpkin types numerically that doesn't rank the types in some arbitrary way. One solution is to convert the pumpkin variety feature into a categorical feature, which we can do using the getDummies function of the data frame. This conversion produces four columns with one hot encodings, one for each pumpkin variety. What this means is that for each batch of pumpkins represented by a row, we'll have a one in the column corresponding to the variety of those pumpkins and zeros in all the other columns. We can try to train a linear regression model using just our newly created categorical feature as an input. But it's not too surprising that we still don't get great results since we're still using a single input feature. We can do better. Let's add a few different features to our input X. In this case, we added month, as well as the variety, city, and package categorical features. The results after running linear regression are so much better this time. We get a mean error of 10.6% and coefficient of determination of 0.94. These are good results, but maybe we can do even better by using polynomial regression? Well, let's try it. Well, our mean squared error is now only 8.9% and our coefficient of determination is 0.96. These are really good results, and I'm pretty confident that we can get solid predictions with this model. This is super cool. In the last several videos, you'll learn how to use linear and polynomial regression to make predictions. In the next video, you'll learn about a brand new topic, logistic regression. I'll see you there.